Hey guys, it's Bonnie with Two Sisters DIY coming to you with information about our virtual painting. This is online at home painting. You order the kits, we send them to you and then you can paint it. Um, this is going to be just a starter intro. It'll let you know what you need to have set up so you can paint well and have everything right there and save you a little bit of time. Um, but first off, you want to make sure that your surface that you are painting on is covered. We are working with paints. Paints can be messy. So I would suggest either putting newspaper down or a plastic tablecloth or brown paper as we have. Um, if you don't have any of those, grab an old towel that's maybe, maybe one of mom's cleaning towels that are already messy and stained up and put it down and paint on that. But you need something down on your surface. You do not want to paint on furniture without something covering it up. You stand the chance that if your paint drips or anything like that, it could ruin the furniture. We don't need to ruin any of mom's furniture today. Nope, nope, she will not like that. She will not be happy and it'll be the last paint kit you probably get if that's the case. So make sure you cover your area up. Newspaper is the best, just easy, throw it, you know, you usually throw them away every day. Just tell dad, hey, save the paper for me. Lay it down, not a big deal. Um, next thing you need is you need to make sure you have your wood, your wood paint item that we're gonna be painting with. This one um, we're doing, that's the honey bunny one. So you wanna have your, your wood thing, it's already pre-drawn for you. <coughs> the edges have been stained, ready to go. Some of the other things that we suggest that you have is you wanna make sure you have your paint colors. Now yours will be in these little, yours are in these little cases like this. When you come in the studio, we have the big bottles. So we're gonna set out all the colors that we need for this particular project. At the beginning of the project, I will go over what colors are needed so you can make sure you have all your colors out. That's in case if you have multiple projects. Um, I know some people have ordered three or four kits at a time, and in those cases, we have doubled up some of your colors when there's multiple colors in the same kit. So this way you have all your colors sitting waiting for you. Um, another thing you're gonna need is you wanna make sure that you have some type of an item where you can mix paint colors. Sometimes we have to do shading. When we do shading, we're gonna add some white to make it lighter or some black to make it darker. I like to use a paper plate. If you don't have paper plates at your house, you can use tin foil. Um, and if you don't have tin foil or a paper plate, grab a regular plate. Just remember you have to wash it right away to get all that paint off before it dries. So we got our paper plate. <coughs> and anytime I'm painting, I like to have baby wipes nearby. They work good for getting paint off fingers. Um, also, if you get paint in areas you don't want them, <coughs> you can use a baby wipe to clean up part of that before make it easier for it to dry faster <coughs> so see how it's got it on my fingers all the paint washes off right off of your fingers with no problems baby wipes work really good for that we buy them by the case but if you have them at home that'll work if you don't have baby wipes don't fear don't worry just grab a paper towel not a big deal okay hopefully we're gonna be good enough at painting that we're not gonna need baby wipes but I already had paint on my hand for making kits up, so that's why I figured I'd show you. Left it on my hands just so I can show you how good it comes off. So this way you won't be fearful when the paint gets on your hand. If it gets on your hand, your arm, anything like that, don't worry about it. It'll all wash off with a baby wipe or even in the shower when you take a bath at nighttime. So baby wipes are good to have handy. Um, a paper towel. A paper towel is good to um, dry off your paint brushes when you rinse them out. Something for water. We use mason jars. As you can tell, it gets quite a bit of use. It's got a lot of paint on it. However, if you have the simple Solo cup, they work just fine. Just put a little water in it. This is what you're gonna to use to rinse your paint brushes out between colors. Um, and that brings us to paint brushes. Um, paint brushes, um, <coughs> we have two different kinds of paint brushes we're gonna be using through most of our painting. <coughs> Each of y'all, any of y'all that bought a set that had the paintbrushes, it'll have all these paintbrushes in them, so don't worry about it. We have our rounds, which if you look at the tip of the round, see how it kind of like has a round look to it? That's your rounds. See them? Um, multiple sizes, depending on how big it is. Rounds work good for doing fine details, lines, things like that. Small areas, rounds are good for that. 
The other thing we're going to have is our flats. Where these are different ones. If you look at the flats, they are flat on the end. See how they are like narrow on one end? The flat. This works good to do large coverage area. Paint brushes are delicate. I'm going to give you some rules about paint brushes, and this is going to help you save your paint brushes. And I know not everybody got a kit from us, but I'm sure you have paint brushes at home. So here's some tips on paint brushes. Do not leave paint in them. Once you finish a color, rinse it out. Do not leave them stuck down in the water like this. Your paintbrush handle is wood. This part, it's wood. If you leave it down in the water, it's going to soak up the wood, as, soak up in the wood as well as into the filaments of your paintbrush. And we don't want that because that'll ruin your paintbrush really super fast, and these will start getting frayed and going, you know, all out like this. We don't want them to go fray. So when we paint, we're going to rinse. And then we're going to wipe it dry. When you go to dry your paint brushes, once you're finished, when you wash all of them and everything like that, do not leave them sitting up upright like this to dry. You want them laying flat on the table to dry. If you set them up like this, the water's going to run down the shaft into the wood part, and eventually it's going to wear this wood part out. It's going to start messing with this this joining right here, and you actually know your handles are going to be popping off your paint brushes. So they can pop off too if they're not just on good from when the manufacturer made them but we don't want to add to it by making them wet, having these swell up and stuff. So we have a lot of paint brushes in the studio. Um, the set that you have here, I, I found a good way you need to, when you, once they're dry and you want to store them, I use a Pringle can, just take the Pringle can, put them in the Pringle can, put the lid on them, they're good till next time. Out of the dirt, out of the dust, all nice and dry, ready to go. So, if you don't have a Pringle can, you can put them in a Ziploc baggie. You can put them in a pencil pouch. Um, if they're already dried, after you've already laid them out and they've already dried, the next day you can put them in something that sets them up if you've got a pencil holder on your, on your, your area that you want to keep them out at. But there's lots of ways to store them, lots of ways to keep them. Just a couple words of advice is don't leave paint in them and don't leave them in the water. If you leave them in the water, you're going to ruin your paintbrushes fast. So, paintbrushes are delicate. They're not exactly cheap, so you want to make sure that you keep, take good care of them. Um, like I said, most of our designs, we're going to be using those two shapes, rounds and straight, rounds and flats. And as we work on something, I will tell you which paintbrush to grab so you know whether to grab a round or whether to grab a flat. Just remember, flats cover large surfaces. Rounds cover smaller surfaces. Rounds are good for details and lines. Flats are good for getting coverage in there. So that's really where we're out of that. A couple things to remind you about. We have our summer camps this summer. Hopefully this coronavirus will be all over and we'll be able to do our summer camps. Um, we've got four weeks of some regular summer class and one week of the dollhouse class. Dollhouse class is almost sold out. If you really want to do it, you need to get in on it. It is a wooden do dollhouse that you'll be making. These are for ages 5 to 14, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We do have before and after care available. You just have to contact us and let us know what you need. Um, we stay busy every single day. So, um, as well as making sure you have all your stuff there, make sure you have some kind of a snack or drink with you. <coughs> I like to have a drink with me. <coughs> oh, my sinuses. Um, that way I can take a drink whenever I need it. My throat gets, you know, a little dry from talking. If you have a snack, make sure it's not messy and make sure it doesn't have oil because you don't want to get oils on your fingers when you're touching your painting. Another good thing to have with you, which I don't have here, <coughs> well I do, but <coughs> is either a blow dryer or some kind of a little fan. This will aid to drying between the steps. It's not necessary. You can wait. Not a big deal. <coughs> so... That's how you set up for your painting, get it all ready to go. Make sure what you are wearing is something you don't mind if paint gets on. Um, I tend to get paint on all my clothes. I think everything I own has paint on it. Um, don't be like Bonnie, don't paint all your clothes. Uh, make sure it's an outfit that is okay if you get paint on it, then it would be your painting outfit. So you wanna make sure you check with mom and make sure you have play clothes on, something that's okay if paint gets on it. At home, you won't have an apron. When you come in here, we throw you an apron on, but even aprons don't guarantee you're not gonna get the paint on your clothes. So, always best to always have a painting outfit on. And I don't mean just the top, because it could get on your pants while you're sitting there. So, that's how you set up for painting. It'll be the same regardless of which paint design you're doing. 
it'll all be set up the same way, so we will um, leave it at that.